Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, welcome back to the continuation of the over-analysis of the slaughter. Picking up right where we left off. Well, we must have passed out because we're in dream world now. And that fish friend's still there, being all glowy. Maybe he's like a spirit animal. Ah, what a delightful pun. I suppose if I wanted to take the time, I could dissect this scene for the symbolic narrative that is portraying. In particular, we have a slowly dripping liquid coming into a plant. It looks like booze. So are we feeding the plant booze? Maybe that's symbolic of our need to drink in order to grow and flourish as a human being, especially if we're a nordastic private eye. So anyway, we find a book about Alice in Wonderland and we take a look at it, and then all of a sudden, a glass magics up on the table, and then we fill the glass with the mysterious liquid that we drink and then the dream sequence is done after we escape through a mouse hole. It's just interesting, I suppose. I don't necessarily see the importance of it, but hey, maybe this will all work itself out in the later chapters of the game. But wait, there's more. Yeah, we're not done yet with our surreal adventure game experience. <laughs> Yes, we're tripping our nor balls down to where the murder happened. Note the interesting use of color in this scene, and yes, I'm sounding pretentious because I mean the words that are coming out of my mouth. I like that there's only one source of light in the background, and that it is obscured by the darkness that surrounds the majority of the screen. Now, the only things that are in color outside of the light source are the victim and their blood. Our heroes in black and white. It's rather interesting. It's a visually striking image, and it's a lovely and minimalistic use of contrast. Nothing too flashy here, but nevertheless, it still conveys a certain sense of weight. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting moment here. Our hero is talking about how terrible his life is and how he's been on a downward spiral for quite some time. And the game does a pretty effective visual representation of this. For starters, he's telling how bad his life is to a murdered corpse. And also, the dog that he tried to rescue for the reward money is just prancing in the background not giving a damn about him. I mean, that just conveys a whole lot about our hero right there now, doesn't it? Well, that was a pretty cool sequence of events. So now what do we do? Well, we just gotta wait for stuff to happen to us. Yeah, again, the game kind of has a weird tone. The lady just hung her umbrella on our hero's outstretched arm. All right. So we get a nice transition to our hero washing up before he meets with his newfound client. Again, really nice visuals in this game. Really nice visuals. And of course, our hero is desperate to make sure that he keeps this client because again, he's a desperate private eye. Of course he's going to be desperate and do whatever this lady asks of him. And fortunately for our hero, she's really not asking for much, except a little bit of grave robbing. Well, is it really grave robbing? So all this lady wants is our hero to go to the morgue and steal a pendant that was on her murdered sister's body. Because apparently the police aren't going to give it back to her. Instead they're going to keep it and sell it on the black market blah 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 rationalizing for breaking and entering into a morgue. And of course our hero is a bit iffy about it, but like the majority of Noor stories, this mysterious femme fatale offers our hero such a large sum of money that he simply cannot refuse her offer. Thank you. 
So you get your typical rich femme fatale. Is she a femme fatale? Kind of hard to tell. She's in Victorian garb, so we'll say she's a Victorian femme fatale. They were pretty conservative back then. So armed with a little bit of an advance, our hero's gonna try to break into the morgue and do what that lady wants. Oh look, there's an eyeball poking out the little people. And no, our hero doesn't acknowledge it. Maybe he's just used to it. That's still really weird, folks. Oh look, for the very first time in this game, we get an exterior shot of our protagonist's house. Nevertheless, though, there's not a whole lot for us to do here, so let's get to the overworld map. Yeah, there's an overworld map, and you can go to all sorts of locations. Like, say, the crime scene. Now you may be thinking, ah, oh, we're going to have to find a clever way to get past this Bobby and get to checking out that crime scene. Well, you'd be wrong there. Frankly, the only business we have here is to go into the little shop that's now open and to buy some random stuff that's just laying around. Like, say, for instance, this thing on the table here. Yes, we've picked up the umbrella hat, the most practical and Victorian of items. So what are we going to do with it? Well, I don't know. Maybe we should go check out that morgue. But as you would expect, this quite literal doorkeeper here will not let us into the morgue because we don't have legitimate business here. So naturally, we're going to have to find an adventure gamey way to get inside the morgue so we can complete our objective. And believe it or not, this is where that umbrella hat comes into play. You see, we're going to give it to this guy because it's raining outside and for whatever reason, he refuses to carry an umbrella because his hands are too divine for touching you know, whatever we're giving him the umbrella hat and well this happens yeah he's stuck now that umbrella hat must be very very securely fastened to his head but with the gatekeeper now taken care of we have all the time in the world to find an alternative way into the morgue and sure enough we do Well, that seems like an obvious way in. Shame we don't have a screwdriver on us. But this will only be a temporary inconvenience. Because sure enough, we're going to find a screwdriver somewhere. And no, don't think we're just going to go into the shop and buy one. That would be absurd. Well, how lovely. The friendly barkeeper was worried about our health. But nevertheless, there is an important item we can get from him. You see, what we gotta do here is order a cocktail. A screwdriver, to be precise. Yeah, we're gonna get our screwdriver from ordering a screwdriver. That's very adventure gamey right there, folks. Very adventure gamey. Yeah, these puzzles are kind of absurd in a Monkey Island kind of way. I mean, we got a man stuck in a doorway with an umbrella hat, and we got a screwdriver from ordering a screwdriver. But hey, let's go break into the morgue now. Surely this lighthearted and kind of absurdist comedic tone won't suddenly change.
Wow, look who's dead. The hooker with a heart of gold who we met very early on in this game. She was the one murdered in the alley by Jack the Ripper. And oh, wait a minute. That means her sister is a lady we're working for. Oh my goodness, things suddenly got very sad and very complicated. Talk about the game changing its tune. And I mean that quite literally, the music's changed on us. But nevertheless, we have to get that pendant. Which we do by just looking around and clicking on stuff. And eventually, wow, we found the pendant. And once again, this game provides another visually striking scene. And thankfully, there's no peeping Tom in that little peephole. Although, come on, hero. How can you not notice that? Oh, hey. Our hero's fast asleep now. Hopefully, he won't drown in the bathtub. But oh, yeah, the dead lady whose name he just recently learned is in the boat with him. Let's see where this goes. Yeah, this is all kind of bizarre. It's like our hero's on a date with her, and she's telling him all this personal stuff. I guess his subconscious is just making up everything. Yeah, it's almost like I'm playing two completely different games now. On the one hand, you have the game world, which is filled with some wacky, crazy, Monkey Island-style puzzles and sudden bouts of sadness. And then you have these dreams, which are just... Banana Pants Crazy Twin Peaks Town. But damn, are they interesting. Oh yeah, before we see the next scene, I just want to point out that I am not in control of anything happening here. This is like a cutscene, folks. Wow, that was messed up and pretty damn effective. It's like the game was controlling itself and solving a puzzle and it was really gory and freaky and yeah. Damn, this game knows how to shift tone at a drop of a hat. Like right there, that was really damn clever and pretty well executed. I have no idea what any of it means. Maybe this guy is actually the serial killer but he doesn't realize it because he has these freaky blackout dreams. But still, damn, that was cool. <laughs> 